Hey, this is Ihab. You're trying to render your scene and you get a lot of weird noise in Arnold and Maya. You get some nice results, but along with it, you get more and more noise. And you're trying to reduce that noise and you don't really know what's happening. You try things out and then you make one little change and then suddenly your render is 10 times as long. So in this video, I'm just going to go straight to the point and tell you exactly the things that you need to know in order for you to make an intellectual decision on how to improve the rendering quality of your scene. Okay. Okay, so the first thing to know is going into the settings of Arnold, we have the tab here and we have the camera AA, diffuse, specular, transmission and subsurface scatter. The attribute you need to pay attention to is this number here because what's going to happen is that this number is going to be squared. So it's going to be nine, as you can see here. And then every one unit of these is going to be an additional square number of this. Let's say the camera AA 100 let's say all of these are at zero right now you can see it's 100 for camera aa anti-aliasing by the way and the total is 100 so if i add one here that's going to add a whole hundred because it is the square number of 10 and so on and so forth so now you can see that if you were to go generous on this number it could be a big mistake because it's going to be taxing you on an exponential level. So for that reason, keep this humble and try your best to refine your quality just by using these numbers here. And then when you feel really that you need to go higher, because in many cases you do, even though when you have higher numbers here, you may end up just increasing this number. But at least your goal is to make sure that when you increase this number, you're being very conservative and careful and you're tracking every change. Now let me briefly explain what is diffuse specular and transmission and subsurface scatter. If you open the hypershade to create a new material, tab AI standard surface. So here is a fresh material. You can see here we have the base, which is going to be the diffuse. The specular is going to be specular and specular means basically that kind of shine or reflectivity quality that you get with your renders. And then you get transmission, which is Arnold's way of saying transparency. And then you have subsurface, the menu here. There's a concept called energy conservation. And the summary of that is that you have three different components of each material. And those three run in a specific priority. The highest priority goes to reflectivity. And then the second priority is going to be opacity. And then the third one is going to be the base or diffuse color. In a nutshell, that means if you have 100% reflectivity, and that in Arnold's term is metalness, notice how we no longer have access to the transmission and we no longer have access to the subsurface scatter. So reflectivity has the highest priority. But let's say this is set to zero. If you go to the transmission, which is opacity, and you take it all the way up, since it is next in line of priority, then we have no subsurface here. But if you reduce it even for a little bit, let's say I'm going to make it 0 0.8, then the subsurface scatter here has some value. But even if you go all the way up to one, technically speaking, because this is taking over 0 0.8, you will only get as much as 0 0.2 here. So with that said, now this is what you need to track. So for instance, if I create this material, I'm going to go to the preset and I am going to make this preset Chrome. And with Chrome, you can see it is 100% on metalness, which is reflectivity. And in this case, if you want to improve the result, you need to go into specular and add more of it. So let me make a quick scene so we can evaluate the information a little bit better. All right, so right off the bat, we're getting some sampling issues. One thing you should definitely practice is this region, the crop region for rendering. I learned from my student, Christian Allen, that actually the shortcut for this thing here, the crop region for rendering is by holding shift and then with the left mouse button. That was pretty cool. Very useful, very helpful. So make sure you practice this. And uh, thanks for that, Christian. Okay, so, so I only have base. I have some specular, but that's not something I need to worry about right now because I'm not really getting any specular. And you can see there's no transmission. So I can simply just go here to the camera AA. And uh, by the way, also practice another thing here, the, sc the screenshot for comparison. So now if I go and boost this up to 10, 
which would be a high number but I don't really care that much because I'm really cropping through the render so it's a fraction of the full image therefore it renders much faster another thing that uh, you would definitely definitely need to take advantage of when you take a screenshot or when you're done rendering it actually shows you here exactly the numbers of those samplings so make sure you leverage that number to really keep track of what changes you're making and what result you're getting now notice here I'm still getting some sampling issues so this is the case where you would go to the diffuse and boost it up now here's something if I go to the subsurface scatter and crack it up all the way to 10 let's see if I'm gonna get any difference nope no difference at all if I crank up the transmission and the specular all the way up now here's the kicker the rendering time has spiked and again we are on a very small crop area of that scene imagine what this could do for your scene if you are rendering on full scale and if you have a variety of materials that you really can't keep track of now it would be fascinating if the final result of this spike rendering time turns out to do exactly the same as 10 camera AA and one diffuse all right so the rendering is finally over here is the result you can see the numbers of sampling and it took me 2 minutes and 11 seconds now here's the result when I had 10 and 1111 any difference look zero difference and this took only two seconds I'll just remove this and then I will deselect this by clicking with the left mouse button and I will stop the rendering for now I'm going to take a uh, I think I already have a screenshot okay so now what I need to do is to take these all the way down and then boost this up the diffuse I'm gonna boost it up to say six okay now here's the thing if I get a better result in a faster time then that means my knowledge of the variation of those samples attributes plays a huge role so let's try this out and keep in mind that the fact that you have number 10 here is pretty intense so you really really should be very very careful when you add a single unit to the camera AA so start always with two or even three so only add more camera AA when proven to be needed here's a screenshot and it took 21 seconds here's the result of the final render and notice the difference between it and the one that took 2 minutes and 11 seconds insanely different right so now you know exactly how you can work things out and uh, better yet I might even be able to go here and you know let's just try three camera AAs because the lower the camera AA the much faster your render would go okay so it's already done believe it or not screenshot check this out it took two seconds I had three camera AA and six only for the diffuse there's a slight difference here you could say you know what I'm just gonna boost this all the way up it's good to exaggerate sometime because you get to see really like how far things could go and now compare and now you can see that it's still not as fine so my conclusion is I can go with six and add one more camera AA and in that case I will get a really nice and very render friendly result lastly I want to say one more thing that could also be instrumental for you if you had a material that had subsurface scatter and I'm going to go to the render settings AOVs and then go here to the SSS which is subsurface scatter and add an AOV for subsurface scatter so the reason why I created that AOV is that if you were in confusion and you're not sure if what you're dealing with is a sampling that is coming from the subsurface scatter or the transmission or the base which is the diffuse then in this case here check this out once you have AOVs or render passes you can go here to the view and then AOVs and then go to the SSS I have zero on it here so that does not really allow any rendering for the subsurface scatter notice here of course I set it to zero before this because I didn't have subsurface scatter and uh, now it's getting you that result and if you go to the overall image it's now rendering but if you go to the 
AOV of subsurface scatter. Here's the thing. Notice how noisy it is. Provide more sampling opportunity for the subsurface scatter. Notice now when I increase it, it's going to go much cleaner. And the whole goal of this is for me not to jump to conclusion and render out a higher sampling on the camera AA because again, that is going to be multiplied or added to all the other numbers here. And this is the final result with higher subsurface instead of going all the way here. One last thing I want to say that if you have a light, let's say an area light. So whenever you have lights, you need to go to the areas where there is shadow. And I'm just going to go with this. Right. Notice here there's something called samples. So there is sampling for the light as well. So let me take a screenshot here and compare sampling of one with, I'm going to go high. So don't go this high. Like even six is relatively high. In the previous example, the difference between the light samples wasn't really evident because I had the sky dome. And when you have more lights that would illuminate certain areas in the shadows that you're trying to sample, then the sampling effect becomes less significant. Meaning that when you have a light here, for instance, then you don't have that much shadows and therefore you have less shadows to sample and worry about and fix. And that's why it wasn't really evident. So I made this example here where I turned the scene around and got a nicer angle. Notice here, this is, this is a great example in my opinion, because it's actually going to show you the difference between sampling with shadows versus sampling with materials. So for instance, just this shot here, you do see sampling going on in here, that little kind of grain noise. And that's because of the material itself. But if you go to the area here where you have shadows, you do see that sampling. So to rule out which is which, you go to the light and increase the sampling of light. So here's my light. So I made some tests between one versus six. And this is the rendering with one samples of the light. And here's the result of six. And of course, you can see here there's a time difference. And sometimes that difference could be really significant. But in this case, it was about less than a minute difference, which is very much worth it. But notice in both examples, I didn't have any difference in here. And just to make sure that I'm really on the right track in my calculations, I would go to a um, slightly more shaded areas and investigate. And yes, I don't see the difference. And now in this case here, I would go and make a selection here render it out. The lighting might be a little, seems like the lighting is a little bit different. Maybe I've switched other things, but I still get the same result. So now I go here to the render settings and then I'm going to increase the diffuse to maybe six. So here's a screenshot. So again, I try to exaggerate the results sometimes just so I would know exactly if I'm on track or not. So you can see here that the diffuse is pretty limited. So at this point, this is the case where I would think, okay, it's time to increase the camera AA. So if I increase it to five or let's go six, for instance, let me take a screenshot. So this versus this. And of course, the best way to really decide if this is worth that extra time investment is by really you judging based on your scene. Additionally, I do have subsurface scatter here. So I would definitely also go and increase the subsurface scatter, which could play a big role here. So deselect so I can see the rendering. Okay, let me take a screenshot and keep in mind that we can always track the sampling precisely from down here. Yeah, so there's a bit of a difference between with extra subsurface scatter and also more difference with higher camera AA. So in conclusion, by increasing two camera AAs, and two subsurface scatter, I jumped from this result to this one. Totally worth it, especially that it's not too taxing on my render time. One last tip I wanna leave here is that if you have a lot of lights and you only want to have the shadow effect of only few of them, which 
would allow you to stay in control in your scene and also it's going to allow you to worry about less shadows than more than in that case you can always select the light that you're only using for like in this case here for instance it's only giving me some illumination but also it's creating some really cool shadows but if you have a light there that is just kind of doing some spotlight effect or something like that you don't really care for the shadow from that so you can always select a light and go into the cast shadow and take off the cast shadow i hope you enjoyed this video see ya